Finding good quality medieval reenactment equipment can be really hard these days. There aren't a whole lot of shops in Australia and buying online can be so hit and miss. I know from personal experience how tempting it can be to go for cheaper stuff and sometimes you get very disappointed with the product. In this video we're going to look at the Byzantine call for help and how the Pope responded. In March of 1095, Pope Urban II held council at Pienza in France, where the Byzantine ambassador appealed directly for help. Now we've lost in time exactly what that appeal looked like and I guess consequently we don't really know what um, the Byzantine Emperor was really seeking. We can get a feel for it through some of the discussions and the papers and the letters that were written at the time and it seems like that they were seeking uh, a military expedition predominantly led by Normans um, whether that be at sort of a royalty kind of level or, or not we were not really sure but uh, then there needed to be uh, in the eyes of the Byzantines some fairly direct assistance whereby they could repel uh, the Seljuk Turks and we'll look at that in a second. The Seljuk Turks had recently uh, taken control of central Anatolia which was right on top of the Byzantine borders. The Seljuks were recent conversions to the Muslim religions and the Byzantines had a very real fear about what this meant for them and uh, the, the raids along their own borders and the, the, they had seen a very rapid collapse of Christian kingdoms in the east in terms of the uh, northern African and what we would today call Middle Eastern kingdoms that we've already talked about such as Egypt and Syria and Libya and so on and so forth. Pretty obvious if you look and do some research that the, uh, the Papal See had received for some considerable time appeals for help from the Eastern Christian Kingdoms. Pope Gregory had previously even discussed leading a crusade himself directly uh, and taking knights with him uh, to, to repel the Seljuks but this obviously hadn't occurred Whereas Pope Urban II, I think he felt um, that here was an opportunity for Christianity to take responsibility for some of what was going on. He believed, I, I, I think, that there was a collapse in parts of the Christian faith which perhaps had contributed to this. And uh, Pope Urban II really sought to, for the Christianity to take a real kind of um, role in the leadership of these nations in the future. Now we know that the the Byzantines at this at, at this point in history still had a sizable Varangian guard which was mostly composed of uh, Norwegian and Danish mercenaries but also uh, had a large number of Anglo-Saxons which had come across after the Norman conquest and particularly after the harrying of the north many of these people had sought to escape Norman persecution and, and went where they believed they could apply their trade as a warrior and, uh, and become mercenaries for, for this um, large military force. And the Anglo-Saxons actually made a significant contribution to this force. So during the Council of Pienza, we believe that large parts of the, the Pope's plan began to take a very clear shape. I think the Pope started to have very serious discussions with particular people about how he could help and what roles that particular people could play and how much, um, what kind of a force could be raised. That's coming up in our next episode. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.